Hi, this is Linda, and I'm back again with our Techspert series. Some of you have been following along. We've tried to bring you really valuable services and Techspert's in this area uh, for investors. And today I have Ted Ferry, and Ted is with Canadis. And I'm just like so honored to have you here, Ted, honestly. Ted has like over 15 years of uh, experience just with single family real estate in some form or the other. And he has just touched it at all these different levels. So Ted, I'm gonna let you fill in the blank on like that specific list of items that you've done with real estate investors and single family. Sure, thanks Linda. It's really great to be here and thanks for hosting me. When it comes to my background, pretty much every, like you said, everything that I've done in, in my career has had something or another related to single family residential. I had the benefit of, of working with a luxury spec developer in Manhattan Beach, California to start off my career. That kind of drove me into more of the construction side. I worked for a national home builder, um, had the opportunity to actually work on the security side in, in debt financing and CMBS securitization. As the market kind of had its ups and downs, I, I rode on the downside and had the opportunity to work in non-performing loans, uh, really heavily focused on in analytics. And probably the most relevant to, to what we do at Canadis is in single family rental. And I, I had the opportunity to work with a, a family office for uh, just about five years, the true family. And in this experience, we, developed an acquisitions platform and purchased about 1,100 single family rental homes across 20 different markets across the country. Wow, I would, I would tell you if some people watching this today would be very interested in just the specifics of what went on. Like what are, you must have like, I'll call it a takeaway from all that experience. What are a couple of things you'd say they, they need to know to be efficient to do that? You know, as much as my experience has been in analytics and I really get into the number side of things, I could say uh, uh, at, at the face of it, there's nothing really, there, there's no rocket science in single family rental. I think the thing that makes it it's so complicated is that you have so many moving pieces and there's so many, you know, small decisions that you have to be on top of and make sure that you're staying on top of all the time. And so I think my biggest takeaway is the importance of data and being okay. able to manage the flow of that data and stay on top of it. Okay. So the data from the perspective of making the decision and the data in the, uh, in respect to the fact that like where it is in the process, like workflow. You know? Exactly. So I think it, it comes into play at every level. If you think about it, you know, we've got, we've got this guy here, you know, this isn't an iPhone, but, uh, everything that's happened since the our last downturn when single family rental really kind of evolved as an institutional asset class it was enabled it was enabled by by mobile you know, before that people looked at multifamily and said okay we, at least we know that we have a lot of units all in one place and we from it's easier to wrap our head around it from a management perspective but you start to look at single family rental and having multiple assets across multiple different places it, what people refer to as scattered site management, it's without the technology, it really was a difficult thing to stay on top of. And so as, as mobile has become more of a technology that is ingrained into what we are looking at, it starts to um, really provide value and efficiency at every level. So starting with acquisition, how do I know what properties are the right ones to look at? You know, so pulling in that acquisition data, crunching it and trying to understand what are the best opportunities as I have offers out, how do I keep track of all my offers? Where do I know where, where, where they are in the process? Have they been countered? Do we have to, are they waiting on us or waiting on them? Is the agent staying on top of it as we move through closing, you know, which, who are the different closing uh, and title companies that we're working with and at what stage are they at and who needs to sign and it, it, everything, right? And then as you get into after you close on the property after acquisition and you're, you're in ownership, there's a whole separate side to things. You know, we always work with third-party property managers. So we have somebody on the ground that for our customers that help to make sure that everything is getting executed. 
but there's still a lot of stuff to stay on top of, you know, especially from a financial perspective. And so being able to have an efficient way to pull that data in and look at it on a, uh, in a value add manner, I think that's really what, what, Uh, that whole description kind of encompasses. Wait, for some reason you're breaking out a little bit. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Just repeat that last sentence and that would get me to where we were. So you said, you know, uh, so all this data and then you're pulling out, you're extracting that information and, and then we kind of lost you. Okay. Yeah. My, that my lost the internet there for a second. So Right, so it's from start to finish, from acquisitions through to uh, management and ownership of the property. That's really what we're talking about when we say staying on top of the data. There's just, with single family rental, there's just so many little things that pop up and being able to do that in a value add efficient manner is, is really, I think, uh, a crucial aspect to being a successful single family rental operator. Yeah, I, you know what, I, I really love that because for me and I think for our members here, Anybody that's, let's say, old enough to have been through those transitions, like I can visualize what you're saying that like now you can be in a car and scattered site management, you're getting information, you could be e-signature for whatever you need, like it's just such a different ball game that really does enable, uh, you know, so much more, I'll call it profitability, because the process isn't slowed by days of waiting for somebody to get here or get there, you know. Right, right. And, and I think the benefits to more of the DIY or uh, retail investor is that you have, you have investment dollars like Silicon Valley tech type investment that is really bringing these institutional grade tools and making them available for investors of all sizes. And I, you know, that's one of the things that excites me the most about being involved in, in working single family rental. You know, for example, some of the largest institutions, if you look at something like an inspection, they're using an, an app that basically it, it drives the inspector to look at all of the things that are specific to that institution. And as they're walking through the house, they're taking pictures, taking note of these things. You know, do I, do I need to do paint here? Do I need to do carpet? Does it need a new kitchen? Is everything fine? Do, do we have any signs of, of foundation cracks? Are there any other things that we really need to make sure that we're staying on top of? And through that, this application will go through and it drives a, a scope of work. And on the backside, this application that they have even connects to places like Home Depot. And so once they're done, it, you even have a, a materials list that you can go, go to Home Depot and they have it ready for you to pick up. And I think that those are the types of things that, the in, that has really made institutional grade uh, investment uh, a really value add management. It's those types of tools that through different technology and, and development of platforms are really making it so that the, that individual investor, that DIY investor can operate at the same level. Yeah, I, I mean, I so agree. I, we recently had one of our clients, I think, you know, we run like all the software, so Mapolio, Buildium, Rent Manager, whatever our client is on already when they come to us, right. or, we, or we get them on a platform. And he just recently upgraded his um, Buildium in this particular uh, example to include the move out inspection. So on our end, it's, you know, we would see a move out report and uh, it, it was incredible. It was, it had to be 35 pages long. It was just as you described it, every picture, every image, every note. And as you say, it just converted that whole exit process because the PDF goes directly to the, um, you know, it, it, let's say the resident that's exiting. There's no waiting six weeks, waiting four weeks to find right. out that like you're, you're, you're going to take something off for this, you know, problem. And everybody always, I always say, they always agree when they're standing in front of you. And then when they get the letter six weeks later, they're like, no, that carpet was just fine. Now it's like, it's non-negotiable. It's right here. We all agree to it. I sent you the PDF at the moment in time. Like, I, I just love that. Like, it just ends that whole back and forth. Right. Yeah. It's such a valuable service and, and it enables that property manager to, to know right there. They have a, an, 
They've said, hey, this is what's needed. With the investor has been presented with a decision. They can make a decision. Hey, I agree. Do this work. You know, within days after move out. And so the same situation. Not sitting there for six weeks to try to adding to vacancy, adding to the uh, right. adding to cost. Right. Exactly. And, and you know, the Home Depot example too that you gave is awesome because I happen to think. And, and again, I think all the players are very competitive. Um, but Home Depot is just trying to really project themselves in that space and everything they're doing with like that contractors department, like literally I have guys that take pictures of a part and they put it on the Home Depot app and it will pull up the serial number for that part. Like that, that's just wow. unbelievable. So wow. they really are trying to like, I'll call it own that space and get really tight with the investor and the maintenance um, what do they call it? Like their pro department or something like Home Depot Pro. Right, the pro desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then they if think about the analytics. I mean, if you're someone like myself that loves those analytics, the reports they're giving them at year end, you know, they're breaking down the material per the project ID they put in per the address. I mean, and we have some properties that are in, um, I'll call it BC areas. So your maintenance guys are, I'll call it BC you know, quality. They're not, you know, they're not the top of the line. So right. you, your expectations and what they want, what the landlord wants to pay them are at a certain level, but you give them tools like that and that, you know, raises up the quality of what they're bringing to you. So, right. Right. It just enables so much more, yeah. more control for the investor, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and both of us are going to get too excited and off track. You got to tell me more about the value you as a company and yourself, of course, add to the investors. So tell me a little bit more about your company. I'm pointing to your website. You can't tell, but okay. uh, just how can you help us? You know, my investors, I should say. Great. Great. Thanks. You know, I really, again, really appreciate the opportunity to kind of showcase what we do and we started Canadas Real Estate to bring these institutional grade tools to investors of all sizes. You can see here the, our tagline on our website, big capital gains in your pocket. That's really referring to the services that we provide to 1031 uh, investors. Okay. And we're located here in Southern California and there's so many people that have made great decisions in real estate. You know, maybe, maybe they purchased a home when they, um, you know, 20 years ago or however long ago they lived in it, raised their kids. And, but now, you know, it's time to downsize. And so they're sitting uh, uh, for a lot of these people, they're sitting in situations where they're, they've incurred a lot of gain. You know, they're, they have a lot of appreciation, but they have a lot of gain as well. And so if they want to go sell, they're going to be faced with a, a very significant capital gains tax bill. You know, for example, here in Newport Beach, there's over 1,700 investor properties with high gains. So these are non-owner occupied houses bought before 2005. The value of these properties is over four and a half billion wow. with gains on those houses of over two billion. Okay. If you do the math, it's an average of $1.1 million in gain per house. Wow. You know, that equates to a, a tax bill I was just going to say a pretty big hit at year end. Right? Three to four hundred thousand dollars. I mean, depends wow. on everyone's specific situation. But, you know, it's daunting. You know, you're like, oh, man, I have all this value in my house. I want to you want to monetize it. But it's a scary situation. And so the solution is a 1031 exchange. And what we do is we provide an end to end solution to people in this situation where we help them to monetize the equity in their home. And, you know, they may not realize that they own that house at a one or a two cap. We help them exchange that one or a two cap property for a portfolio of six cap or better wow. uh, of homes in places like San Antonio, Memphis, or Kansas City. Okay. And so that's, that's really what we designed the business around is helping these 1031 investors. In that, we've built this, this really great acquisitions and asset management platform that you don't have to be in a 1031 to, to take the benefits of it. Okay. Okay. And, and that platform of course utilizes, um, I'll call it your knowledge with the technology and how to best, um, let's say navigate that process as we just talked about in the most efficient way as to not lose days or time, et cetera. Right. 
there's there's so many great sources of of properties today you know especially as the whole industry is evolving you have you know platforms like roofstock you know of course you have the the mls and um own america you, you name it Intera. there's so many so many great ways to source properties but how do you know where to go for what and so one of the things that we do is that we've built a, a technology that pulls in the opportunities from all these different places mm. and we're sifting through it and driving the analytics. And you can see up here, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but right, right up here, we have this client login button. Yes, I see it. Uh, when, when you become a client of Canadis, you get a login to this, to our portal. And this is what we use to present opportunities specific to what you're looking for. Okay. And so we present these opportunities once we get confirmation from the client that they want to move forward with a, um, with the property, our system is set up to automatically generate offers. You basically click okay. This offer gets populated with all of the, the data uh, specific to your account. It gets sent to you for signature. Once you sign that and it automatically gets sent to uh, the listing agent who's going to be writing the offer uh, for us on the ground. Wow, that's tremendous. And, and how many different investors, um, let's say, I, I'm assuming you don't have a limit, um, just anybody that comes to you, you'll help them fill that pipeline with deals. That's really how we design the platform. It's, oh, it's wow. just, you know, basically to leverage high volumes of people coming through and to, um, you know, the more and more that, that people are using it, that automation really, you know, it creates more value. So. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm like super impressed. Like anything else that, uh, like how about we go, can I just, at, at will, I imagine your blog gives like a lot of information. What about like people, like I assume that's some success stories, right? Uh, if, if, we, if we go to recent closings, will that oh, give them some? Sorry, I, I had a, uh, a, a plane coming over. To, uh, I, Saying hi to us, I, I couldn't hear, the, hear you there for a second. Yeah, you just want to show off. You're in California, right by the airport, which is an ideal location, and uh, <laughs> such a beautiful area there. We're, so, we're 15 so, minutes from door to gate. So. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's really nice. All right, so this would give me an idea. If I was interested in learning, I could come here and see what? What am I going to see on this particular page? Right, so these are a few examples of the types of houses that we're pulling up. Okay. Uh, you know, these are, you know, three markets that we're fairly active in, you know, primarily we're spending a lot of time in San Antonio. Okay. You know, this is, if, uh, if you have a conversation with me, I can't go five minutes without mentioning San Antonio. I just love it for okay. single family rental. Okay. But you know, we, we have, uh, great relationships with people in Kansas city and, and Memphis and all, all also, you know, great rental markets. But you see, one of the things that I really feel strongly about uh, for our customers, you know, especially working with the 1031, you know, we have a fluent, an affluent population and um, they've done really well in real estate and you know, they're worth a lot, but they may not have spent a lot of time in real estate. Okay. And so the whole thing here is that you know, it's, it's taken a long time to build up this value. I want to make sure that you know, I think capital preservation is among the, the highest uh, sure. things that we're trying to achieve. So I, I'm, I'm in designing this strategy. I've done everything that I can to pull out, you know, volatility. Okay. One of the core things that I think that you can do with this is, is to uh, setting a minimum rent amount. And, you know, it's, you can get really detailed into it for, you know, on a market by market basis. But where we've set this minimum rent nationally is a twelve hundred dollar rent. Okay. Okay. From my perspective, in a lot of places in the country, that's a pretty solid middle income type uh, rent or type tenant that is uh, supporting that rent or can afford that rent. And um, this is all based on the most expensive thing related to owning a single family rental property is every time that property turns. Right. 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 Yeah. From my experience, if everything goes right, you, you probably have an average of a $2,500 spend every time that, that um, tenant turns, either replacing the carpet, doing paint. Now, there's a lot of things you can do to limit that cost, say if you put in hard surfaces, stuff like that. But just on average, you factor in about you know, $2,500 every time you turn. 
you're probably going to have, um, you know, one to two months of vacancy and you have to pay a leasing commission. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I'm in total agreement with you because we see, I'll call it the other end, and most definitely I would agree that the most expensive thing for single family is the churn. So if you can pick out that market, and I, I think what, uh, what we see anyway on the management end is we're seeing longer leases. We most definitely are seeing people more comfortable signing longer leases, staying longer. Some build in increases, some don't just because, as you said, they, they were trying to avoid the churn, you know? So you're saying you pick like what I'll call it a sweet spot to, yes. avo to avoid that churn. Right, right, right. In, in it's trying, our, our, our theory around it is just trying to find the type of tenant. You know, they may not be going to our houses, admittedly because of the schools, but once, they, once they're worked into that school system, they're gonna be less likely to leave. Yeah. And so yeah. it's really just trying to find these people that are going to stay in these houses for a long time. You know, and of course, as investors, we're, we're trying to make the most returns out of our, uh, of our property. So we're going to be working to increase rents w when we can. But I think it's also really important to pay attention and not increase it so much that you drive a turn. Right. And so, okay. and, and I think that it's also, you know, this is really catered to that, you know, somebody who's, going to be more passive and, you know, leave a lot to the manager, the property manager, and then our group as an asset manager. Um, but I think the, the more active that somebody wants to be on the DIY level, it makes more sense to look at other at, at types of properties outside of this box. You know, maybe it's a lower rent level or a different market that where they're, they're interested in being more active to create value for that specific investment with a different strategy. Sure, sure. Well, I have to ask out of natural curiosity, tell me about San Antonio. What, where, what is that? I have never been there. My daughter has been there once. She loved it. Is that just, the, it's a combination of climate, atmosphere? Like, what is it about San Antonio that you love? Well, well I, the first thing is it's in Texas. The, okay. Texas is a, a great business environment. Okay. It's attracting so many businesses to move there. Yeah. And that's, that's created really great migration patterns from a, um, you know, from a housing demand perspective. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't know how large of a, a market San Antonio is. I, I think on a, a city basis, it's like something like the seventh or eighth largest city in the country. Okay. Okay. Um, and of the, at an MSA level, if you take the, the big three in Texas, you have Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. Dallas is a, a, call it the front office market, highly diversified job base. You know, it's, it's a really great place to be, but it's also attracted a lot of capital. And, and what I've seen, there just hasn't been as much opportunity. Um, definitely worthwhile if you can find anything that fits your yield profile, jump on it because it's a great place to be. Um, Houston, largely driven by oil and gas. You know, it's, it's amazing for such a large market. It's the fourth largest MSA in the country. Okay. And um, how much it's still driven by oil and gas. And so that's one of those things. It's, it's, as we talked about before, having stability and staying away from volatility, that brings in a level of volatility that you just have to be, it, it, it doesn't mean you want to stay away from it. It just says you want to make sure that you're on top of what's going on, especially with the oil price. And right. then that might affect the different asset classes. You know, we had um, when... Up in when oil dropped in 2000, end of 2014, it you know basically it obliterated the um, you know the higher end market part of the market you know seven hundred thousand dollars and higher. But what it we owned this family that I worked with, we owned uh, about thirty houses that were in you know more of a higher yielding lower rent type neighborhood. And the funny thing was was that the the oil price drop that also dropped the gas prices Oops, sorry about that and that drove um chemical manufacturers to do more business because they had the gas the lower gas prices and input right wow yeah yeah so you wouldn't have expected like oh it's a mini recovery there right <laughs> right so it was like the the top came down but the lower part the lower values yeah. actually increased in value yeah and yeah so just those weird dynamics that you just have to stay on top of it it creates more active management I know we're, we're trying to, we're um, talking about San Antonio, but uh, we're, I'm supposed to be talking about San Antonio, but I'm talking, focusing on Houston and Dallas. So 
Here's San Antonio. One of the reasons why it's so great out of the big three is that the job base lends itself more to a, a strong renter population. Okay. You know, okay. If, if, you know, Dallas is front office, Houston is oil and gas, San Antonio is more of a back office market. Okay. The, you know, USAA financial services is based there. It's an example of the types of jobs. You know, you have a lot of, you know, back office types jobs. You have some call centers, call things centers. like that. Sure, sure. Um, you know, all great renters. There's four uh, significant military installations in, in San Antonio, which also drive the stability. Um, you know, Brax hasn't happened for a while. The last one was scheduled under Obama. He canceled it. It doesn't seem like there's, there aren't any more um, – scheduled now and just to um if you're not familiar with brax brax is the it's the initiative that moves around military personnel across the country okay no i wasn't could you tell by that look on my face like i'm <laughs> not sure what that means <laughs> okay um and so as far as how that affects real estate is that you want to make sure you know it could have detrimental effects on real estate in some areas if you if you're betting on a military installation driving demand and that moves, then that could have an adverse effect on real estate values. You know, inversely, if you if you have more military personnel coming into your area, it could ri you know, raise values. Sure, sure. It, it seems like that's probably off the table for the time being. And even if it were in play, the bases that are in San Antonio are differentiated and so it'd be unlikely that you'd have any major effects you know one is a um it's a hospital hospital related a medical related uh, facility they've had a billion dollar investment into it recently um, they handle all the burn trauma um, right right uh, another one lackland air force base is uh that's where they have the air force boot camp you know i don't okay. think picking up and moving anytime soon and uh, <laughs> so so, several levels of you know st uh, you know stable military bases, and so that kind of again it it builds a a great rentership population and a stable one. And here's the one thing that really gets me with San Antonio is that well, I was blown away when I when I heard this fact. Tourism. There's over 22 million tourist visits to San Antonio a year. Wow. Wow, that, that's really a good fact because people don't think of that. I don't think they think of that as a tourist de uh, destination, you know, de not top of mind. I certainly wouldn't. I mean, you, you know, you have the Alamo that's right downtown there. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have a basement, you know, Pee Wee Herman reference, but it, <laughs> the, the comparison in terms of that figure, just to put in perspective for me, we're right down the street from Disneyland and there's, there's only 16 million annual visits to, to Disneyland a year. Really? Wow, that's a great, like, Ted, this is like the information you've given is just like incredible. Uh, you must have some strong relationships, I'll say, in that area as well to help with this, um, to help you, I'll say, reduce all friction just, just based on your, I'll call it, deep knowledge in that area. Anybody that wants to invest, it sounds like you know everybody in the city <laughs> from the mayor on down probably <laughs> at least half at least yeah. half of them, i yeah. bet you do how long have you been in that area in that market you know work in that market you know we first started to look there in well actually if you go back to the reo days you know i think i first took my initial trips there in in uh, 2011. wow from a single family rental perspective we really started to uh, dip our toes in and, and get aggressive there in, in 2013. wow that's great. I mean, I can just imagine, I know the relationships I've built over the years in something like that. That's, that's really, really good for an investor that doesn't know that market. They're talking to, a, a, for sure, an expert in the area with relationships in the area, not just a book expert, you know? Yeah, um, no, I appreciate that. And, you know, our, like you said before, our property manager in, in San Antonio, Kevin Clark, he's, he's a pro. He's been in business for over 30 years. He manages over a thousand units himself. Wow. Is also, uh, you know, highly involved in, in construction and developing, um, actually right now, two to six unit, uh, communities that the really interesting layout there, they're gated, they have an HOA. Okay. And, you know, they're, they're a higher spec level of, you know, two to four and, and six unit communities. 
um, from a investors that that work with him outside of those projects how they benefit is that he has this construction operation on staff wow. and, um, you know basically every all of his customers get the benefit of economy to scale that's great that really is great well ted as you know we're running out of time here so how about you can you put up some um contact information on the screen from the website of course. At least leave them with an image of that website, not just San Antonio. Uh, but I have to tell you, I'm going to use it as a headline. I already thought of that when I put this out there because, you know, we're in the Chicago market and it, it's sometimes okay. tough here as well as we work with people nationwide, but they're always looking for innovative new ideas of where to invest. And we'd certainly like them to reach out to you if they're looking um, for any of the markets that you mentioned, but just in general, for knowledge on that 1031 exchange and how to make that go smoothly if they're get, if they're looking at a big capital gains on some property. Yeah, no, that sounds fantastic. And, and we'd love to talk with, with anybody who's, who's interested. We, um, as, as you can see, I'm a little bit of a geek. And so I, I love to, uh, I love to talk about it. And so we're always happy to share information. Uh, you're a very knowledgeable geek and I love geeks. So <laughs> this is, this is, uh, I actually spoke to someone this morning. I can't remember the name of her website, but it is like geek. Uh, it was geek tech, you know, for, um, classes for technology for real estate investors. So, so it, it's a great, uh, <laughs> it's a great matchup for me today, but That's Ted, great. let's, let's make sure they get your information. So, I'm going to just read it. I see Ted Ferry, F-A-R-R-Y. You can reach him. Is this correct? 949-267-3990. Is that the best way they can reach you? Yeah, that's our office line. Okay. And, um, I'm always reachable on my cell phone as well. Happy to share that. My cell phone number is 310-503-4069. And you know, I can pop that up here for convenience. Sure. And then that email is the best two houses at, and I've been uh, practicing here, Canadas. <laughs> I got that down now. Right. Yeah. Co, not us. Canadas. Okay. Canadas. <laughs> but yeah, um, houses, that, that's a uh, great email to use for us. Um, you know, my, my email again too is just, I'm always happy to speak with people as Ted at the same domain. And then if you would like to schedule a time with us, we have our calendar link here. And so you oh, can just click in and, and uh, schedule a time to, to speak. Well, I thank you again. And I will get this. I will get you a link as soon as we put it out there. We'll put it in social media. If you share as well, hopefully we'll get some people to the expert because uh -huh. you certainly are the tech expert and the geek expert in this area. So we love it. Thank you so Great. much. Thanks, Linda. Really great, to, really great to be here. Thank you for having me. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.